Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome. My name is GBay99. I hope you all are having a wonderful day. Today, I have another video for you guys where today we're going to be talking a little bit about who I think is the best champion to get better at League of Legends with. As I mentioned in my last video, I am currently in a spot where I'm not trying to climb in rating anymore, probably not for the rest of the season. I recognize that I'm going to be diamond. I'm going to get the diamond rewards. I'm not going to be getting my diamond five ass to masters by the start of season seven, unless by some miracle, I make some serious improvements movements to my gameplay and plenty of the mistakes that I regularly make while playing the game. So instead of trying to just climb in rating and get some arbitrary number higher that's going to be reset by the start of season seven anyway, that's what I'm focused on currently. Rather than just trying to win games, I'm trying to play in a way where I'm focused on learning and getting better at fixing my problems, which is a lot different than just trying to win. Like I'm not playing that much Aurelia right now. I already know Aurelia back to front. I understand the champion really, really well. And although I could probably just nonstop grind Aurelia, games and maybe win some more, maybe climb up to Diamond 4 or beyond, I don't think that would really help me as a player as much. Right now, I'm trying to focus on playing other champions to get a better overall understanding to how, how to carry a game as a top laner rather than just how to carry a game as Aurelia. So there's a couple of options for me out there for some new champions that I want to throw into my repertoire. For instance, I could be trying to pick up Flavor of the Month champions, right? A lot of champions out there like Yasuo, who has an incredibly high win ratio, champions that are really well known as carry champions in the current patch who can do their job really well, but that's not always a super good idea for someone that's just trying to play to get better. Like right now, Shen is a pretty good, pretty solid top lane pick who could probably also teach me a little bit about the game, but Shen is also getting nerfed in the next patch, and he's probably not going to be nearly as much of a successful, hotly contested pick when the new patch rolls around. So instead of spending hours upon hours of trying to grind out Shen games and learn a champion that might become irrelevant when the new patch rolls around anyway. Instead, I've been trying to find some champions who have some pretty distinct weaknesses in their gameplay and weaknesses that I share as a player, right? Because just playing the most overpowered champion isn't necessarily a good strategy to get better as a player, even if it is a good strategy to win games in solo queue. I don't think doing that's going to fix my errors as much as playing champions who will highlight errors that I have and hopefully force me to fix them if I don't want to drop in rating. So rather than trying to play the best champions out there, I'm trying to play champions that will force me to fix those mistakes and the best champion out there for me right now at the moment is actually Teemo. It's honestly pretty funny this champion that everybody hates and that I have certainly hated for six years now is the champion that I am going to be spending a lot of time with to try and make me better at decision making and map awareness. I've mentioned before on the YouTube channel how I'm really bad at keeping an eye on my mini map and my decision making when doing stuff like pushing a lane or deciding to split farm and, and whatnot is probably my biggest set of issues that are currently holding me back from climbing and raiding, and Teemo is actually the best champion out there for a top laner to fix those exact issues. I already know how to lane for the most part. I mean, I know how to go in for trades, how to harass, how to last hit, how to play versus most opponents' top lane, so I don't really need to focus on a champion who has a really complicated laning phase that you have to focus on, and Teemo, as a top laner, is someone that has the least complicated laning phase possible. It's incredibly easy to last hit with him. It's incredibly easy to harass with him. I mean, he's so annoying that a lot of top laners that you play against probably won't even stand in lane. They won't even try and CS against you, so you essentially have a free lane to just walk around, last hit if you can, and if the opponent steps forward and tries to last hit themselves, you can easily go in and pick up a first blood. However, Teemo is a champion that, because of his incredibly strong and dominant laning phase, is going to have to have very good map awareness and decision making with how you position in lane. I mean, he's going to get ganked a lot, like, obviously, the enemy top laner is going to be calling for all sorts of ganks from the mid laner and jungle to come up top and help him out so his laning phase is in absolutely hell. He might even call for the support to roam top lane if possible and just give him some sort of help so he doesn't have to lane against you alone. So, obviously, you're going to be getting ganked for those reasons, but Teemo is also just a very susceptible to ganks kind of champion. I mean, he's incredibly squishy. He does have a slight bit of range, but he's also, he, he doesn't have any dash escapes or anything. He only has his little movement speed buff, and once his flash is gone, he's pretty easy to gank and get kills off of if you are a jungler. So you know the jungler is going to be targeting you. You know the mid laner is going to be roaming up top lane to try and kill you. You have to keep your eyes glued to the mini map, meaning someone like me, who's really bad at paying attention to the mini map, has to get better if they're going to play a champion like Teemo. All of the stuff that I mentioned so far is pretty much purely early game oriented gameplay with things like the laning phase, right? But Teemo is also an odd top laner in that he 
he sucks in team fights in the mid and late game compared to pretty much every other top laner out there. I mean, he he's not meant to team fight unless you're in a rating where people just won't focus you and you can stand on the outside and auto attack people a little bit and maybe land a useful blind or something. But I mean, other than that, you really should not be looking to team fight in the mid and late game. So a lot of what you're going to be doing to be useful to your team is split pushing, just trying to split push to win the game, which is another another type of gameplay that you really need to pay attention to your mini map. You might have to end up back dooring if you want to win the game just because of his crazy poor team fight. But whether you win or lose and whether you get a crazy impressive score or not, if you play Teemo enough and you don't want to end up feeding nonstop, you will have to improve at your map awareness and using your mini map, which is something that a lot of players like me suffer from. So let's go ahead and hop into some gameplay and show you guys some specific examples of what I'm talking about. This was a game I was playing earlier today. I was playing Teemo top lane in ranked up against a gangplank who, these were all low diamond, high platinum players. I think I was diamond, diamond 550 LP or somewhere around there when I was playing this game. I was playing top lane against gangplank, as I said, and we start off this game very strongly. We're harassing well, we're last hitting well, and gangplank makes a few mistakes to a point where we did take ignite. We're able to abuse that, pick up a first blood, which is very, very important and useful seeing as we need as much of a cushion as we possibly can in the early game, before the jungler has a real opportunity to gank. A couple minutes later in our game, when our summoner spells both come back up, our ignite and our flash, we're continuing laning. We're doing a good job of harassing him so far, although he has landed a couple of barrels on us, which has gotten our health down to about half health. He ends up missing a triple barrel and missing an auto attack on a normal barrel, stepping too far forward trying to get it. We're able to use our ignite. This time he tries to flash away. We want to flash and make sure we end up securing the kill, even though that flash might not have been needed. But right now, this is actually a really good example of our first instance of using our minimap to see that Jace is coming top lane, running away immediately and making sure that he doesn't get in range to use his combo to finish us off. I don't think he actually ended up even seeing us as he tries to end up using his Q combo on the bush right there, but we end up getting that kill, getting away safely, and starting off this game really strong. The landing phase continues on as normal, and for the most part, I'm doing a pretty good job in lane. Gangplank is getting very, very little CS. If you take a look at the minimap, I'm doing a good job of warding and keeping scuttle control. Gangplank lands a barrel on me there, and one thing that I haven't mentioned so far this game is the enemy jungler is actually a Zack. So, of course, I'm sure you guys see what's coming right now. Zack is able to jump over that wall, which I did not have a ward or any sort of mushroom there to get vision of. I didn't, I, I probably should have kept that warded by now or at least placed a mushroom there, but that, that that's something that we make a little bit of a mental note of to make sure that we are prepared for when Zack tries to make that jump top lane and finish us off there. One of the things that's really good about playing Teemo, specifically, specifically when you're trying to get better at paying attention to your minimap is being able to place mushrooms everywhere. Right now I'm able to place enough mushrooms and wards to a point where I'm going to have vision of Zach no matter where he comes from if he's going to try and come top lane to gank me. Like no matter which which path he takes unless he takes like some path through the laning phase until I place a mushroom in that bush up there he is not going to be able to get by without me seeing. Right there you can see on the minimap he just ended up killing that mushroom so I'm able to back off and realize that okay he's top lane trying to kill me. I I should probably let my teammates know, let my jungle know that he's up here, and maybe if uh, they want to go for the dragon, which is coming up in about a minute, then they can do that soon. As the link continues onwards, I'm doing a pretty good job of clearing Gangplank's barrels. He's getting a little more aggressive and pushing forward in the lane and everything, but I have a lot of shrooms around here. I kill another barrel, and seeing him so close and so far away from that wall where we just saw Zack, I decide to go aggressive, flashing forward to dodge Zack's knockup, getting the kill on Gangplank, and then I am very low. I think that maybe there's a chance that I can outplay the Zack and get away from him. I'm auto auto attacking him as much as possible and trying to dodge as much damage as possible. I do a pretty good job of dodging backwards and forcing Zack to flash and alt me to get the kill, but he does come top lane again. We do a pretty good job of paying attention to it, but maybe that's just our typical g greed that ends up getting us killed there. It's still a one-for-one -one trade though, so it's not the end of the world. And overall, we're doing a pretty good job, it seems, this game of bringing a lot of jungle pressure top lane. This is a little later in the game where you can see we've had some more pretty decent trades. We're five three and one at this point in the game we've bullied gangplank out of lane successfully and if you see the minimap the rest of our team has had a field day taking towers and dragons because of all the focus that zach has had top now right here you can see me do a pretty interesting thing you can see i'm standing to the right of my ranged creeps while auto attacking this tower but i'm actually going to switch over to the left side because that's a lot further away from that bush that zach keeps on jumping out of and what do you know he comes top lane again to try and gank me and that quick decision ends up saving our life that's 
that's something that is, uh, I, I thought it was actually a pretty interesting moment. I'm starting to make some pretty good decisions, I think, this game, of focusing on doing my best to learn quickly mid-game and not just make a bunch of mistakes in the game and end up trying to learn as much as I can after those mistakes are made. I do end up making a little bit of a mistake of standing too far forward to the right, so maybe we aren't actually learning that much, and I do end up dying for it. But for the most part, we're doing a pretty good job of recognizing patterns of when people are coming top lane and just making sure that we have our, our blue trinket warding that spot as much as possible is the most important thing I think I should be focusing on at this moment in the match. A little later on in the match, you can see that I've taken that top tower already, so I'm going to rotate bot lane and continue my Teemo split push. Nobody on the enemy team can 1v1 me, seeing as how far my build has progressed, so as long as I pay attention to the minimap and where people are, I can have a really successful split push and potentially take a lot of objectives. Right now, all five of the enemy team, I can see them, they're on the minimap taking down mid inner turret, so I'm going to continue split pushing and taking their bot in hip. As long as my team can stop the ports, I mean, Gangplank can't teleport bot lane right now, I'll just kill him one versus one, I'm able to take a free inhib turret and go forward on this free inhibitor as well. You know, a lesser player might back off here to go group with the team and get scared and get nervous that maybe they're going to take our inhibitor or something, but I have the knowledge to know that the enemy team can't take that inhib turret, they can't take our inhib. This is a very good, very free trade, and our team is also able to pick up a couple kills. A little later on, the game gets a lot tighter as the Zack Suicide steals a Baron that we were taking after another successful team fight. So I decide to start grouping with my team a little bit and being a team fighter. You know, this is another example of, I think, Teemo doing a good job teaching me how to position and how to not always go so ham like I love to do on Aurelia. Right here, I'm trying to make sure I kite back and be as annoying and as invisible as possible. So hopefully I don't get focused down. You can see I'm incredibly low. I'm very easy to kill, but by positioning myself properly and not just going ham as I do every game on Aurelia, I'm able to survive and we're able to kill three opponents as we take that Baron off of all three of them and then start pushing down mid lane. I'm not quite sure how many of you guys still know this, but my second favorite and second most played champion is actually Jax, who is another good example of this kind of play style where he can team fight a lot better than Teemo, but he's also very, very good and well known at being a split pusher. I choose to play Teemo over Jax, not just because Teemo is actually better in the current meta, but also I like how much more punishment Teemo is. He's very punishing to an opponent, like you can see on this gangplank as I 1v1 him yet again and take this inhibitor, but he's also punishing to myself. You know, the fact that I don't have the escape is a very important part of this playstyle where I'm supposed to know that I, I'm supposed to know when I should stand forward and when I should back off. Like right here, I should probably back off a little bit, seeing as how many people are bot lane compared to our team and how unhealthy our team is compared to theirs. Having that leap strike ability to just jump away whenever I make a mistake isn't quite quite as good for learning and getting better at the game, I think, as someone that doesn't have as much movement or as many escapes, someone like Teemo. The game continues onwards, and while we do make a couple of mistakes every once in a while with our team, like right here when we go and try and 2v1 versus a Jace and Gangplank who have a very easy time killing us, showing once again just how fragile Teemo can be if you make a bad decision with him, our team does a good job of grouping and doing a just overall good job of synergizing very well with our split push, taking as many objectives as possible, and finishing off the game with a win. This was a game that I had a lot of fun with. I played Teemo a couple of times in the most recent patch because he's actually actually one of the highest win rate percent champions top lane has on the patch at the moment. Um, I'm not too sure if that's going to be changing too much in the upcoming patches, and I'm not too sure who his counters are, if they're going to be getting buffs or whatnot, but overall, I do believe that he's a very good champion if you have similar issues of map awareness and decision making when trying to get better at the game. Like, Teemo is a champion who is just famously an annoying character, and he does have a lot of annoyances that you, you obviously have to deal with when you play against him, but when you play at as him, he has a lot of things you have to think about that really can make you a much better player. Anyway, though, I hope you guys all enjoyed watching today's video. I'll see you all soon, but until next time, thank you very much for watching, good luck in solo queue, and have a wonderful day.